Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. In this video, we are going to design a digital circuit with N inputs and N outputs. The goal is simple. Only the most significant one bit among the inputs should be reflected in the outputs. All other outputs must be zero. To keep things modular and scalable, we will create a building block, a block box, that can be cascaded to support any N. We will demonstrate the design for N equals 6. Also, we will take gate delays into account. In our question, NOT gate have 0 nanosecond delay and all other gates have 1 nanosecond. Finally, we will refer how to modify the design to meet a 4 nanosecond timing constraint. Let's get started. Let's look at an example with 8 inputs and 8 outputs. Suppose the input is 0010100. Here, the most significant one is in position 5, counting from the right. So the output should be 0010000. Only the MSB is reflected in the output. All others are 0. Now let's simplify and analyze the logic with 3 inputs and 3 outputs. We will start by writing the truth table, 3 columns for inputs and 3 for outputs. For the first row, all inputs are 0, so the output should also be zeros. In the second case, only the A0 is 1. This should be reflected in the output, Q01, but only if all higher bits are 0. Let's look on another case, when bit A1 is 1. This will produce 1 at output Q1, as long as the most significant bit, A2, is 0. We don't care about the lower bit, A0, because we only want to indicate the most significant one. The logic continues. Whenever a higher bit is 1, all lower bits become irrelevant, or don't care. Let's now drive the logic equation for each output bit. For Q0 to be 1, A1 must be 1, and A1 and A2 must be 0. For Q1 to be 1, A1 must be 1, and A2 must be 0. We don't care about A0. For Q2 to be 1, only A2 needs to be 1. All other bits are ignored. We can now generalize this pattern as n increases, so let's adopt our logic to handle arbitrary n values. If we look closely at the pattern, we will notice something interesting. To activate a specific output, all the inputs to its left, more significant, must be 0. So for example, if we get q3 equals 1, therefore a4 and a5 must be 0. Inputs to the right, the less significant ones, are don't care. This allows us to define a cascade structure. We begin by feeding AN directly to QN. Then, AN minus 1 can only activate if AN is 0. And AN minus 2 depends on both AN and AN minus 1 being 0. And so on. Each stage checks whether all more significant inputs are zero before allowing its own input to affect the output. This gives us a clear structure to build a modular system that scales within N. Before we continue, if you're finding this content helpful or interesting, I would really appreciate your support. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Looking closely, we can recognize a repeating pattern in the logic. Let's isolate this pattern and define it as a unit block that can be reused multiple times. Each block has two inputs, AN, the input bit at position N, and a flag called MSB indicator IN that indicates whether a more significant one has already been detected. The flag works as follows. If the flag is 1, it means no MSB has been found yet. If the flag is 0, it means MSB has already been found. The block also produces two outputs. QN indicates whether the current bit is the MSB, and the MSB indicator OUT that updates MSB flag to pass down the next less significant block. Now it's time to cascade the blocks. We will start with the most significant bit A5. Since this is the highest bit, it has no more significant neighbors, so we feed the constant 1 into the MSP flag input. This tells the first block, no MSP has been found yet, you're the first to check. Each block then passes its update flag to the next, less significant block. We continue chaining all 6 blocks in this way. 
Each unit is identical, modular and simple, which makes the design scalable and easy to implement even for large n values. Note, we can ignore the MSB indicator out of the last block since there is no lower bits that need it. Let's take a closer look at timing. We're given a constraint. The output must be ready within four nanoseconds. To understand whether we meet this requirement, let's analyze the delay through our cascaded structure. Each block introduces one nanosecond of delay for the MSB flag to propagate and then one nanosecond to generate the corresponding QN output. As a result, calculating Q0, the last significant output, takes six nanoseconds since the MSB flag must travel through all six blocks before the final output can be determined. But we only have four nanoseconds to work with. That means the last two outputs will miss the timing requirements unless we optimize the design. Let's explore a creative solution. One of the major advantages of hardware design is the ability to perform operations in parallel. Take Unit 2 as an example. The MSB indicator input from the left takes three nanoseconds to reach it, but the actual input A2 arrives after just one nanosecond. This means Q2 depends on two signals arriving at very different times. So what if we restructure the system so the all Q outputs stabilize within three nanosecond maximum? Then we could explore using logic gates to correct the finalized results, making sure we meet the 4 nanosecond constraint. Let's now zoom in on the lower part of the circuit, A2, A1, and A0. Let's analyze what happens here. Notice that Q3 through Q0 stabilize after 3 nanoseconds. Outputs like Q5, Q4, and Q3 are already valid and meet the timing requirement. The challenge lies within Q2, Q1, and Q0. So how can we make sure these outputs are also valid within 4 nanoseconds? Let's consider the output of unit 3, specifically its MSB indicator out. There are two possible scenarios. If the signal is 0, it means a more significant one was already found. In that case, we want to force the lower outputs to 0. If the signal is 1, it means no MSB has been found yet. So we will still need to determine the most significant one among A2, A1, and A0. Here's where a simple end gate makes a big difference. If MSB indicator out from unit 3 is 0, then the end gate immediately forces Q2, Q1, and Q0 to 0, regardless of what coming from A2, A1, and A0. But if the signal is 1, the end gate allows the correct MSB value to pass through and it's adding only one nanosecond of delay, which keeps us safely within the four nanosecond limit.